Hello, Miss Thomas Reed. What do you prefer to be called? Um, Miss Thomas Reed is fine. Okay. Um, hello, Miss Thomas Reed. Thank you for joining me today. Um, so if it's okay with you, I'm just going to get right into it. Okay. Um, so tell me a little bit about yourself, like where you're from, um, you know, tell me about your family, interests, hobbies, stuff like that. Um, so I'm originally from Houston, Texas. Um, my family, my mom, Kim Thomas is, um, I think she's 60 now. Uh, she grew up as a model, grew up in, you know, the limelight and whatnot. And my father, Robert Reed, is 62 and he grew up in the limelight as well as a <laughs> basketball player. He played for the Rockets and the Hornets. Um, I have three older siblings and, um, yeah, that's just a little bit about my background. Okay. <laughs> Um, I was looking at how tall you were, I was like, I'm not sure if this is just because of the camera or what, but you seem pretty tall. Do you play basketball yourself? Yes, or I did. Um, I played basketball for around 10 to 12 years. Um, uh, my dad, like I said, he played for the Rockets, so growing up, it was always basketball camps or going to games or anything that just involved basketball, I was immediately in, and then, um, at first, I didn't like basketball, but then I tried out when I was in middle school for the team, and I was like, I mean, it's okay. Like, it's something to do. Um, then I went to high school. Uh, I played basketball all four years. Freshman year, I was like, this isn't it for me. Like, I'm going to quit. I'm done. And then my coach was like, hey, like, you can, go to bas like you, you can play basketball when you go to college and get college paid for it. And I was like, why would I want to do that? Like, how much is college? And then I saw how much college was, and I was like, <laughs> we're going to do this. This is, yeah, we're going to go for this. We're going to go ahead and do this. So um, I played college basketball. I played at University of New Orleans um, and then transferred to Biola University um, in high school. I also did theater, acting, and journalism and all other things nice so. that's awesome um so just a couple of like random questions uh about like who you are just get a background of who you are um what is your earliest memory <clears throat> funny because um i've been sorry that's my cat um done therapy and i remember the therapist asked me what's your earliest memory my earliest memory is um he used to have a teacher in kindergarten named Miss Upadaya and she would uh she would read to us while we <laughs> massaged her feet. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, and it was like all those little kindergartners we just we would fight to like we were like, It's my turn, no it's my turn, I'ma do it and we would just fight to rub this, our teacher's feet. Why she just read all the little books to us. So that's, yeah, that's my earliest memory. That is very interesting. I have never heard something like that before. Rubbing the teacher's feet. Wow. I'm sure she appreciated it. I guess it was like an exchange. Like you get the story time, she gets yeah. the feet rubbed. Okay. Um Bother in the day, so she's gonna get it confused, so Yeah. Uh so okay, speaking of teachers, what is um who which teacher had the most impact on you and how? Oh my gosh. Um, I have a lot of teachers that have had the most, like, that have had like such significant impact, like an impact on me growing up. Um, recently, um, my professor from Biola, Dean Yamada, Dean Yamada and Josh, John Schmidt, they kind of like up there. Um, Dean, because I, transferred in from New Orleans, I like transferred from the South to the West Coast, and Biola is a predominantly white institute, and um, as a film student, and you're, like, around, like, as a black woman, just in, you know, predominantly white community and society, is just kind of like, so I don't fit in here, that's cool, and then as a filmmaker, everybody's, like, making stories that, like, the actors 
characters are always white and it's just things that like i guess i could kind of relate to but it's kind of like uh no and then when i make my stories nobody understands and i make yeah so <laughs> when i was at the school i just felt like the oddball out a lot and um my first class with him visual aesthetics we would take like photography projects we would have photography projects and take pictures like of the things that we learned that week and i remember him telling me he's like you have a voice he's like your stories are just amazing and um he just kind of upped up my confidence a lot um when it comes to being black in hollywood um so he was just very encouraging um he oh one of the things he taught me in my directing class was um there are no there are only tools, but there are no rules. And like, we all have these tools as filmmakers, as producers or whatnot, um, to create this beautiful story, but there isn't any rules to create that story, mm-hmm. you know? Like, yeah, we've learned all these things for filmmaking, but at the end of the day, when we're filming, it's just kind of like, go with what feels right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then John Schmidt, super dope guy, like, <laughs> he is white, but just seeing like, learning about him and learning like when he was in film school at U- uh, UCLA and uh, he was like <laughs> like you looking at his old pictures like John I look like he was down for the people it looked like he was out there with us marching okay <laughs> um, but he was also very encouraging uh, pushed me to be great always helped me when it came to uh, projects I was like worked on projects by myself so I was like the director the cinematographer the editor all of that mm-hmm. and I'll be like John I don't know how to do this and he was like hey relax it's okay this is what I suggest and then made it happen nice that's awesome that's really cool um uh who were your childhood heroes when you were younger uh my childhood hero um and I guess he's in, like a hero in a way. Um, it's my dad. Uh, I was always daddy's little girl, and growing up, we just became the best of friends. Um, he was definitely my best friend. And anytime I had a problem, anytime I had an issue, anytime something just big happened in my life, the first person I would tell was my dad. So, my father. Awesome. <laughs> um, if you could be or do anything, what would you do? Direct um, films, eight <laughs> episodes, uh, TV series. Um, I, yeah, directing, screenwriting, just being in the film industry in those positions, um, even as like a showrunner, I would love to do those things. And if I could, I would definitely step up and be like, all right, let's get to work. Mm-hmm. Let's do this. Uh, do you prefer uh, television or film? So before I probably would have said film, um, but like Insecure really kind of Insecure by Issa Rae. Mm-hmm. Breaking Love, that show, um, as well as Atlanta by Donald Glover, um, and I May Destroy You, like those, but just basically black shows have kind of pushed me to be like, TV's kind of dope. Like, this is kind of nice. But I still love my film. I still love uh, Ava DuVernay and Barry Jenkins. Like, those are all the people that I kind of look up to with different films. Would you say that those are your, and like, those uh, are your role models when it comes to film? Like, is that what you aspire to be? Yes, absolutely. I 100%. Freaking love Barry Jenkins. Barry Jenkins is how I kind of got like how I started realizing what my voice was for film um watching Moonlight and if Bill Street could talk and then of course I had to do research on Barry Jenkins I was like this director is just amazing like who does he look up to and then uh watching Wong Kar Wai's movies and just like oh this is amazing just fell into it so yes I definitely mm-hmm. look up to Barry Jenkins and Ava DuVernay for everything for film and then what is your favorite Ava DuVernay um project Every, every day, every day project. Oh, gosh. And the name always, every time I'm, like, about to say it, I miss it. Um, it's the one that had, um, 
Oprah Winfrey in it and Stormy Reed. Oh, are you talking about um Dean? Right. The name is like right there, but it's not. It's like oh it's it's based off of a book. I read the book as a kid. I did too. I read the book as a kid. I saw the first movie, and then when I saw that one, I was like, "This is just magical! Like, this is so beautiful! This is beyond what I ever imagined!" Like when I was reading the book, A Ugh, Wrinkle in Time. Is it a wrinkle in time? Hmm? A Wrinkle in Time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I I love that, and I know it's so crazy because Ava is like has so many. She has like Thirteenth Amendment. She has so many films that she's done but it was that film that I was like this is awesome Mm -hmm. yes so and then she's directing um the new show Naomi uh which I'm super excited for so if you could describe yourself in one word what would it be Magical. Magical. Nice. I like that one. I haven't heard that one before. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, oh, go ahead. If other, if um, your friends could describe you in one word, what would they choose? want to say beautiful and not just like physically but mentally emotionally like inside and out yeah. I feel like my friends are like, oh yeah that's a just a beautiful soul yeah nice that's awesome I would definitely get that from you um so filmmaking is a laborious job and so what keeps you motivated through all of all of the challenges that you face um definitely just seeing like that end goal come to life mm-hmm. um it like you said filmmaking is definitely is hard it's you always have to go you have to jump through hoops for things um sometimes like production gets stopped like the weekend before that happened to me <laughs> um, and like you have to scrape everything and start all over again um but just thinking like uh we're actually going to make something and put it out there and people may hate it it might be the worst thing some people have ever seen but just that one person that's like this is awesome I want to get into filmmaking that is what I do it for like just to have somebody see themselves on the screen or have somebody just also be like motivated or inspired to make that film to write that script to take that leap of faith into the film industry that's that's what I kind of do it for that's what I think about all the time nice and what is your process for filmmaking like let's say you get an idea and from that idea where does that go so I get an idea and I automatically write it down um, I have a journal for all my films and um I automatically write it down and then I start to just daydream so throughout the day um, I'm driving somewhere or I'm running errands I just think about that story over and over and over again until I'm like okay where can this go who's our main character what are they like fighting against are they fighting against themselves like another person a machine nature um and just kind of just play around with the different possibilities possibilities that could happen mm-hmm. um within the story and then um thinking of different locations thinking of other people to bring in who's going to be like helping the hero for their journey um and then I kind of play with it for a while usually like a month <laughs> before I actually start writing um and then I start writing and that writing process is even longer because I unfortunately am like kind of like a perfectionist so if a scene isn't right I'm like oh no and I save it and I'm like gotta start all over again and then writing the script I'm jumping from like the very last scene to the first scene to the like now we're at the climax and it's like 
how are we going to get to these points? I don't know, but we're going to figure it out. They're there now. So <laughs> that's just how it kind of goes for writing. And I stay there for a bit. Um, and then it goes into, okay, let's try to make this. We need to find cast. We need to find crew. We need to find equipment. Um, and then with the whole writing process, like, okay, these locations that I'm writing in, I have to be really realistic because people be charging oh so high for these locations so it's like okay if I have, a, I have I know I have a bedroom I know I have a dorm I know I have a kitchen I know I can use like my school so a lot of it is just like I want to expand and be as creative as possible but I have to put a cap on that because I am a recent college student a college grad that has no money <laughs> so yeah that's my little process I'm sorry <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much for that. <laughs> Is that your cat? Yes. Okay. My child, my raven. She um, likes to just knock things over everywhere. So I'll go to work and I'll come home. And if I don't lock her up, her kennel, all of my makeup just on the floor. Oh, and just no. Come. Cool, raven. Thanks. I didn't, I didn't want to use it anyway. It's okay. It's yeah. fine. Uh, well, that's that's awesome. It's very inspiring to hear about your like process when it comes to writing and turning that into um, film and turning that into a project. Um, what actually inspired you to be a filmmaker, to be a screenplay writer? What inspired all of that? Um, so it's actually kind of a long story. So <laughs> growing up, um, like fourth grade, third grade, I started writing poetry. Um, and it was in the fifth grade that that poetry, or like, yeah, fourth, third, fifth, that poetry kind of like soon and quickly became short stories. And I loved reading growing up. And there's like this one specific book that I really just sparked the imagination. I was like, I played with dolls too. So I guess just kind of like all of that mixed in really made me like, oh, I want to make my own stories. So I started writing short stories, and then um, I had my siblings who also acted and danced and did other creative things. And um, then I remember my sister had a project for one of her cl uh, classes, and she was supposed to be talking about like her being an actress and whatnot and like where are you in 10 years and she was like oh in 10 years i just wrote um i just won like best uh actress for a movie or a play called uh beats of the unhearted and that name just stuck with me and i was like beats of the unhearted like that's dope that's a super cool name so i wrote a book called beats of the unhearted oh my gosh <laughs> i was in sixth or seventh grade when i wrote the book and it follows like these two twins and it's like this mystical world and um like because the soul whole thing came from my sister the two twins like were like dark-skinned girls brown-skinned dark-skinned twins and whatnot and i was like my sister's gonna play in this role um like where i'm writing i'm like she's gonna this is her this is this is my sister and then just growing up continuously writing poetry writing short stories um and then i got into journalism in 10th grade and uh, like along with acting and being in acting uh, theater classes, I went to journalism and I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. Like around that time, I was like, I need to find a major so I can, you know, figure out what I want to do for the rest of my life because that's how they said it was going to go. So I was like, I'll do journalism. Like this is kind of cool. This is kind of fun. And then my journalism teacher was like, hey, we're going to do a film festival. I want you to make a film. And I was like, I don't know anything about making a film, sir. So no. So I skipped the first year film festival on my 10th grade. I was like, no, heck no. But then my junior year, he asked me again. I was like, okay, I'll make it. So they had all like the theater kids and all those in like theater class to make a film. And they did it around the whole district. And I made my film and I was like, this is horrible, but we gonna go with it. My horrible film ended up making first place nice. in the district. And I was like, y'all actually liked what I made? That's crazy. And I really enjoyed, like, just writing the script and coming up with ideas. And then, like, I already enjoyed that because, of, like, the short stories, the writing short stories and whatnot and playing with dolls. But then to see people act and 
and read my script and reenact everything and to see it come alive and editing I was like yo this is really dope like and just the process of it like I was in high school and for one of the scenes I was like oh this scene it's gonna be a huge party and everybody's having fun and the main character you know is getting drunk doing drugs woo! and then to have friends from high school come over to my house and it was it was a literal party and i was like yo this is dope like i'm having a good time they're having a good time it's free food for everybody like heck yeah so <laughs> just the process of everything um really kind of pushed me into filmmaking and then i made a second film my senior year and i won third place and i was like yeah this is this is what i want to do um, even though make a third place and i remember people like oh dang that sucks you didn't like get first and i'm like I still made this like look at what I made this mm-hmm. is dope so just that whole process of my sister of playing with dolls of writing short stories and doing books and journalism and acting and how these siblings that always acted and watching them act that's all just went into the pot of here's Jana's future mm. that's awesome oh man that's really cool how <clears throat> how a lot of different things it's not just like a linear story a lot of different things affected you at different parts of your life and so that's what created the person that you are today so it's really cool um so how how do you choose a, a, a cast for your or uh yeah cast for your films is it like because it, it, in a way like you're you know still starting off as a filmmaker as, as a screenplay writer um so it's not like the traditional like sending out a casting call, reaching out to agents and stuff like that. How do you, um, what's it like to be this um, uh, I don't want to say like rookie, but like there's something really cool and nitty gritty about what you do because you're kind of starting from scratch. And so what's that like as a filmmaker where you are? Like, you're not in Hollywood. You're, you know, um, uh, starting off. And so that's not, there's there's something to say about kind of coming up from the ground up and, and utilizing those things, kind of like um, Issa Rae did with her, you know, YouTube series before she made Insecure. So for casting, yeah, like... I'm still working on getting better at casting. So before, you know, I would just use friends. Like, hey, you want to act? You get free food. Heck like, yeah. All right, cool. Um, and just feeding people, like, wh- whoever I can get, I just get. Um, and then my school actually has, like, a subscription to Backstage, which is where most of the actors go to look for roles. And when I cast, I try to look for people that are kind of very similar to the character already are like ask them about them growing up and ask them about themselves and whatnot and if it's like something similar to the character that they're you know auditioning for it's like okay you know like a little star and i do like a have a star system for like no like ah uh, maybe absolutely 100 percent yes and um i also have to just look at and i know it's like a no-brainer but also having to look and see if they can play the role if they can actually act um and for actors, you have to have like a range. You have to be able to be this sad person who believes there's nothing ever going to happen for them in life. But they also have to be, at some time, like at some point, like this huge, confident, narcissistic person that's like, I'm better than everybody else in the room. And some actors, unfortunately, don't have that. And I know from previous experience, um, like I said, I'm just learning. But I didn't check to see if one of my actors had that range, so I was like, "Oh yes, like you fit this character, like like the whole looks and everything." And as like a student filmmaker, we already don't get a lot of people auditioning because they aren't going to be making money. But at the same time, it's kind of like actors have to use student films to get into Hollywood as well. Right. But we're all struggling because we're all broke. So it's like, if I'm not making money and I have to drive a long way, I'm not doing it. And so I had this one actor, um, and I was like, yeah, like, you got the role, cool, cool, cool. But unfortunately, they were not able to 
give me more. And I'm like, hey, you can give me more. And they're all like, you can't cap me or restrict me um, as an actor. I feel like you're bringing me down. I was like, sir. Okay. I'm not going to bring you down anymore. You can chuck the deuces up, my guy. <laughs> mm. So, um, like I said, I'm still learning. Um, I, I definitely see why people have, like, the casting director and then the direct like each role is very crucial and i would love to just have a casting director so i'm like y'all can deal with it that's cool that's okay <laughs> fine just send it my way that's that's interesting and i know that like a lot of filmmakers starting off and even just like in the the more cut clean um industry as well how face these challenges and what what do you what's your advice to people who face challenges um while making a film or a project or even doing something creatively because it's not as um a clear path as like math or science or you know there's no formula for it um, per se so what's your advice to to filmmakers i just kind of learned um to just roll with punches like I always wanted things to be perfect and like as filmmakers we want it to be perfect we want it to be exactly how we saw in our head and sometimes it's not sometimes you're on set and you want this specific shot but then you see another shot and you're like oh that one's better and it's just kind of roll with everything it's we're here to create and the most beautiful thing about being a creative is that things just happen um, so my advice is just kind of roll with everything uh maybe your light just turned off and you can't figure out like when your lighting just turned off you can't figure out how to turn it off i'll turn it back on it's kind of like okay now we need to slightly change the mood of this scene because our key lights out and it's dark so <laughs> just really just roll with everything um and pick up any kind of solution that you can or that you can think of and don't think that like oh everything is over it's the end of the world like, hey, it's okay. Breathe. Figure it out. And get going. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And um, before, uh, I, I just wanted to thank you so much again for your time. Thank you for working with this um, time difference and everything like that. I really appreciate you taking your time off of work to come and talk to me. Um, so okay. before I let you go, I just wanted to ask you um, what is another like piece of advice that you would give to a young filmmaker starting out and then also if you have any projects that you're currently working on that you wanted to talk about absolutely um so my piece of advice for young filmmakers um find your voice find your voice and stick to that so um, as filmmakers we and that's just directors like you have to know what it is that you want to tell in your stories and I remember my professor telling us this, uh, April Blaine, and he was like, okay, find your voice and uh, know, and like stick to that. So, and he gave us examples, like um, Ryan Coogler, who was always in Ryan Coogler's movies, Michael B. Jordan. That man loves Michael B. Jordan too, so much. Every movie, um, Fruitville Station, Black Panther, freaking Creed, like he has his voice, it's black males being either more than black males or just being um and like Wes Anderson like Tarantino they all have that specific thing that they'll constantly do in all their films so figure yours out that is my advice um for me mine is my characters are always going against themselves they're always having like eternal battle um and it's always just black characters like mostly black women that are trying to figure out who they want to be or mm -hmm. trying to overcome external forces while also fighting themselves and fighting mental health. Mental health is also like very important in my stories. Um, and a recent project that I'm working on actually called Square One, which is a web series, is uh, the main character finding herself when it comes to like, so she just graduated, she just graduated college. Um, and ended her three-year relationship with her ex-fiance 
And so now, you know, she's at square one. So she graduated. She had to move back in with her mom. Nobody likes moving back with their parents. Like, it sucks. <laughs> it's kind of like, I can either get my own apartment and be broke, live with my parents, but have crappy mental health. Okay, I guess I'll call my parents. Like, nobody wants to be broke. And so she moves in with her mom, and she's back in her hometown, and she meets up with people that she's, like, be friends with in high school and they're like oh yeah i got my life figured out you know i got a nice little house you know i got some children i mean nobody really wants kids all the time when they're younger but um like she's comparing herself to people that she went to school with and she's like oh my gosh like i'm behind in life and now she's also having to heal from this traumatic relationship and for her it's just kind of like now she has to get a job Oh, she's been in a relationship for three years. Now she's going through a hell phase. And it's like, ooh, it's life and partying all the time. And then realizing, ah, oh, it's not life and partying all the time. Let's kind of reel it in. Um, so she's just rediscovering herself um, after a relationship where she was never able to find herself. And I feel like in all of my films, it's, it's somebody trying to discover themselves or trying to discover who they want to be and who they feel like they should be in life and just in other people's lives that's awesome well i wish you all the best of luck and i hope to speak to you soon about more of your projects and thank you again so much thank you so much sweet pea it was an honor i loved it great time <laughs>